Hello, this is Cynthia Douthit, and I want to welcome you to an overview of Leviticus 23 as we prepare to celebrate the fall festivals that are coming up. As we look at Leviticus 23, we see that Adonai is speaking to Moses, and he's telling about the appointed times, uh, the Moedims. Uh, these are the designated times of Adonai, and again, we know that Adonai, that's the tetragrammaton, the yud heh vav uh, you will see Adonai or Hashem for the name, or you will see the Lord. So as we look at this, we see these are the designated times of Adonai, which you are to proclaim as a holy convocations, and they are my designated times. Now, one of the things that we see is these are not specified exactly for the Jewish people only, that these are celebrations or designated times of Adonai. We know Philippians 2.11 says that Yeshua Jesus is the Lord. He is Adonai. So these are celebrations of Jesus, the celebrations of Adonai Yeshua. Now, one thing we know, all these festivals that are given within Torah, they all point toward Yeshua Jesus as the Messiah, the plan of salvation, and the plan of the earth. So as it says, uh, these are his holy convocations. These are the designated times of Adonai, the holy convocations you are to proclaim at their designated times. So again, it keeps repeating. These are celebrations unto Adonai. These are designated times of Adonai. They are his designated times. So as we look at this, we're going to be looking at the Feast of Trumpets, uh, Yom Teruah. Uh, we're going to be looking at Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and we're also going to be looking at the Festival of Sukkot. So the Feast of Trumpets, this is the first thing we're going to look at within the scripture. It's also known as Yom Teruah, the day of blowing, because it's going to blow the shofar or the trumpets. It is also referred to as Rosh Hashanah, ahead of the new year, and this is the civil calendar. And it's also a Rosh Hodesh, ahead of the new month or ahead of the new moon. So we see it has several names. Leviticus 23, again, it says these are my fixed times. He gives us the month and he gives us the date on which they are to be celebrated. And again, these are his appointed times, his moedims. These are a divine instruction to come and celebrate him. Leviticus 23, my fixed times, the fixed times of the Lord, Hashem, Adonai, the Tetragrammaton, that yud heh vav -He. It says proclaim them as sacred occasions. And again, to proclaim something, you need to know about it. So proclaim them as sacred occasions. These are sacred times. They are meant for us to celebrate, to acknowledge Adonai is God. This idea, the first one he tells about is a Shabbat. And Shabbat or Sabbath means to rest or draw close or near to God. It's a, a celebration. It's that Shabbat is the very first uh, festival that is given as sacred time. And it literally means cessation from work, to rest. This is a sacred time from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. And it seems to be a rehearsal for what is to come. Because we know in the thousand year reign, when Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah, returns, Rosh Hodesh, the beginning of the new month, and the Shabbat are going to be celebrated. Isaiah 66, 23 says, on every Rosh Hodesh or new month, and every Shabbat, everyone living will come to worship in my presence, says Adonai. Now that's never happened before, so we know it's a future time. And that's the thousand year reign. So we see that these celebrations are celebrations or fixed times of Adonai. You know, these festivals that we're going to look at, and we're just going to look at the fall festivals today. Uh, we'll look at the other ones later on, but these are celebrations that Yeshua, Jesus, would have celebrated. Uh, these are times when his parents would have taken him to Jerusalem. These are times when he would have celebrated. They are festivals that Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, kept. And again, they're going to be kept in the thousand year reign. So my invitation to you is to join me at the Jewish Christian Study Center to celebrate these festivals or join me on YouTube or my Facebook so you can learn about these festivals also and proclaim them to other people as to who Yeshua Jesus is. These are the fixed times of Adonai. They are sacred. 
and they are a set apart time unto Adonai. Now again, to be set apart is to be sanctified. And the word kadosh or holy means separate or separated. These are a holy time, a holy convocation. They are separate or separated unto Adonai. So really the people we see celebrating these are people who believe in Adonai, God. These people who celebrate these believe in the one true God. And we as believers in Yeshua believe in the one true God. So these are a set apart time to him and they are set apart from just the regular calendar, set apart from the everyday thing. You know, these dates belong to him. There are celebrations about him. And this is a reason why Christians should learn this. If you profess Yeshua, Jesus as your Lord and Savior, these are celebrations for you to celebrate. These are occasions for you to come and worship him, to acknowledge him, to learn more about the Jewish Jesus and how he celebrated and what his life was like, because these are things that he would have done. So these dates or days belong to him. So for those that know about them, understand that these festivals are his time, celebrations of him. For those that know about them and don't sanctify them or set them apart, it's akin to not sanctifying the name of God. We're instructed to do this, and they're going to be kept in the thousand-year reign. So why not keep them now to honor and celebrate and proclaim Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah? These special days in the Adonai are celebrated or acknowledged as God's special occasions. These are days that he is remembered on and worshiped. The festivals are to be proclaimed. And again, uh, to proclaim something, you need to know about it. If you're going to pro proclaim that Yeshua Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you need to be in relationship with him. You need to understand who he is, the Jewish Jesus. How did he live his everyday life? What was a day in the life of Jesus like? Crossing the bridge back into the time, culture, content, and context. How did he celebrate? What were the festivals? How did he eat? What did he do? And by studying scripture, from Torah all the way through, we can understand that, that the festivals are to be proclaimed. But to proclaim them, we need to know about them. We need to read them and do them. We need to participate in them. And the more you participate in them, the more you study and learn, the more insight you will have into scripture and the plan of salvation, the plan of the earth, prophecy, and who Yeshua Jesus is. You know, I was, one time I was sitting at a restaurant and I was talking to someone about a festival that I was getting ready to, to celebrate and teach. And there was a, a woman sitting behind me and she was eavesdropping and she got up and she came around to the table and she says, oh, I heard you say you were going to celebrate such and such. And I said, oh yes, you know, here's the invitation, come and, and uh, worship with us, fellowship with us, have a meal with us. And she said, oh, she said, I went to one of those one time and I've read that in the scripture. I know it all. I don't need to go and learn anything else. And I thought, oh, how sad for you. You know, I've been doing this for nearly 30 years and every year I study out and I learn more. I'm drawn closer to God through understanding what this plan is about. And I thought, this is really sad. She's attended it. She's read it once. And hmm. She knows all she needs to know. You know, I think when we get to the thousand year reign, I think we're going to be surprised at a lot of the things. It says Torah is going to go forth from Jerusalem, that Yeshua, Jesus, is going to expound the scripture. And as I often say, I'm going to probably go, oh my goodness, I missed that by far. And then I'll think, woohoo, I was on the right track on that. I think there's surprises there. Nobody has everything down and perfect and understanding. But the more we read and study, the more we take it in into our lives and we can live it and we can proclaim it. The festivals are to be proclaimed and the more you do them and participate in them, the more you'll understand them in the light of Yeshua, Jesus, Adonai, his life and also his return. We look at Leviticus 23, 23, and it says, Adonai said to Moses, in the seventh month, the first of the month, is to be for you a day of complete rest for remembering. A holy convocation, meaning kadosh, set apart, separated. Uh, and on this, uh, you announce it with the blast on the shofar. Do not do any kind of ordinary work and bring an offering made by fire. So we see that this is the seventh month on the religious calendar. Now, there's two calendars that 
you know, it's kind of good to know. The religious calendar, we see that this is started in Exodus. It says, this month will now be the beginning of your calendar, which tells us there was a calendar before this. So the civil calendar starts with the month of Tishri, which we will start Friday night at sundown. And then the religious calendar starts with the month of Nisan when we have Passover. So when you look at the religious calendar, the month of Tishrei uh, is the seventh month. So the seventh month on the religious calendar is Tishri, yet it's the first of the month on the civil calendar. As we look at this, we see a reference to the first day of the month, and it's commemorated with loud blast on shofar or trumpets. Thus, we have the name Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, or Day of Blowing. Excuse me, I've got to get a drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's commemorated with loud blast on the shofar and trumpets, or trumpets. Thus the name, Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, Day of Blowing. And this day and month marks the beginning of the civil calendar, and it begins what we call the fall festivals. Doing a Cynthia sidebar here, you know, trumpets were blasted or sounded when Israel was in distress or trouble. They sounded the blast to call their plot out to God and get his attention. And I think America needs to do that now. I think this Friday night when we blow the show far, it really will <clears throat> be a call to God that our nation needs his help. We are in distress. We are in trouble. And I think America needs to sound the show far and the silver, silver trumpets because we are in distress. And our distress is going to be, I think, made even more clear in the days to come. The shofar or the trumpet was sounded to announce the new moon <clears throat> or the new month in Rosh Hodesh and the appointed time celebrations. The word terura literally means to raise a cry or to shout. And of course, when we blow the shofar, we shout. It's the sounding of our voices going up. We shout, it's a cry to God. The shofar is seen as a cry or a shout to God. This festival falls in the month of September or October. And tradition says that Tishri one was the birthday of the world with the creation of mankind. Now that's tradition and it's possibly true. Maybe that's why the calendar um, started while in Exodus, we see God telling Moses that this month, the month of Nisan or of Aviv, will be the beginning of your calendar now. So maybe Tishri was uh, the beginning of the, the first calendar, the civil calendar. As we look at verses 26 through 32, it talks about the 10th day of the seventh month is Yom Kippur, a holy convocation. You are to deny yourselves and you are to bring an offering made by fire. Don't do any kind of work because it's Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. Uh, it is to make atonement for you before Adonai, your God. Anyone who does not deny himself on that day is to be cut off from his people. So this is Day of Atonement on the 10th day. So in the month of Tishri, you have Tishri 1, Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, Day of Blowing. And then 10 days later, we have Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Uh, this is a sacred occasion. And we see where it says, uh, deny yourself. Now, in Jewish tradition, they say it means to fast, but I kind of wonder if it meant to fast. Why didn't the scripture just say fast? Uh, because normally uh, scripture is clear about doing things. But where I think we might see some insight is when Jesus is talking, he says, deny yourself and follow me. And I think on Yom Kippur, the day when the high priest goes into the Holy of Holies to represent those who have done teshuva. Uh, I think that was a day to deny yourself as God, King, and controller of your life and realize that someone over you was in control and that was God. So I can see how Jesus was saying, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. When you accept me as your Lord and Savior, you are no longer sitting on the throne of your life. You deny yourself that right. And Jesus is on the throne of your life. The high priest goes into the Holy of Holies on this day, and this is one day a year that he goes in there. And I've often heard it told that 
when he went to the Holy of Holies, he was representing everyone in the community, but that's not true. The high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would represent those who had done Teshuva, acknowledged their sin, repented of their sin, turned away from their sin and turned and returned toward God. And so he was representing those people. Now the days between Tishri 1 and Tishri 10, those nine days were seen as days of revival and a turning from sin to God so that they would be represented before God uh, in the Holy of Holies by the high priest. Those 10 days are often referred to as uh, the 10 days of repentance. It was the opportunity that you could repent before the high priest went in to represent those who had done Teshuvah before God. Or it could also be called the 10 days of awe. And for people who didn't repent, this would be a representation of judgment and the 10 days being the 10 days of awe. It is a time that recounts the righteous being inscribed in the book of life and that the completely evil will be in the book of death. And this is why during this time period between the first and the 10th, the people in the community would go to family or friends and really ask them, have you repented? Have you have confessed your sin? Have you asked for forgiveness and turned and returned toward God? They wanted their family members names inscribed in the book of life and not in the book of death with the evil ones. Did you know that there's only one letter between the Hebrew word uh, of truth and death? The Hebrew word truth, amet, and through truth we can have life. Aleph, mem, tav, and met, death, is just mem and tav. Now, the difference is the aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It is symbolized by an ox head, and the high priest would sacrifice an ox before he would go into the Holy of Holies. And we know that Yeshua Jesus is our high priest, and he is every sacrifice. So he is our Kohen Haggadah, he is our high priest. And when we accept him as our savior, he represents us in the heavenlies, in the ultimate Holy of Holies, and he represents us every day. Sidebar uh, that I do, Torah is an ancient archer term meaning to hit the mark. And the term for sin or the word that denotes sin in the Hebrew comes from the archery and means a shot that falls short of the mark or to fall from the path. The key to teshuva is not just to acknowledging the falling short or missing the mark or falling from the path, but it's to confess out loud your sin. And then if possible, to ask for forgiveness from the person that you've sinned against. Some Jews still observe the custom of offering up something in place of their sin, and it's a chicken. And they swing it over their head, and they say a prayer of redemption. And after they have swung the chicken over their head, and it's slaughtered, uh, they will give that food, that chicken, to charity. Some have replaced that today, that they put coins uh, into a handkerchief and swing that over their head and say the prayer of redemption. I want us to go ahead and kind of skip some of the traditional stuff and we're going to look at uh, the festival of Sukkot and this is verses 33 through the end of the chapter and when it starts talking about the festival of Sukkot it says on the 15th day of the seventh month is the feast of Sukkot for seven days. On the first day is the holy convocation don't do any kind of work when you bring an offering. And it says, these are the designate, designated times of Adonai that you are to proclaim as holy convocations. And then it talks about um, that there is on the eighth day, you're to have a holy convocation. And then it talks about on the 15th day of the seventh month, you're to gather, gather the produce of the land, observe the festival of Adonai seven days, and how on the first day you are to take a, a choice fruit or uh, the product of the Hadid, um, Hador, Hadar, Hadar tree, and then the palm fronds, thick branches, and river willows, and how you will keep this uh, festival of Sukkot and you'll live in a sukkah or a hut. So what we notice between uh, verses 33 and 38, it's the 15th day of Tishri. So you have the first day, Feast of Trumpets, the 10th day uh, is Yom Kippur, then five days later on the 15th, you have the beginning of Feast of Booths, also known as Feast of the Huts, Feast of Huts, Festival of the Nations, Festival of the Ingathering, Tabernacles or Sukkot, and it lasts seven days and it's a sacred occasion. 
verse 36 talks about an eighth day or an eighth day assembly that is a sacred occasion and no work is to be done. And this is referred to as Shemini Atzrit, uh, the eighth day assembly or Simchat Torah, rejoicing in the Torah. And as we get to these dates, I will be doing more teachings just on uh, Feast of Trumpets, I will do a teaching for that. Yom Kippur, I'll do a teaching for that. And then Sukkot, I'll do a teaching. And then the Eighth Day Assembly, uh, Simchat Torah, I'll do a teaching for that. So you'll gain a little more insight. But basically, we are to observe the festival of the Lord for seven days. Take the On the first day, take the product of the Hadar tree, the branches of the palms, a uh, bough of a leafy tree, which they refer to that as the myrtle, and willows uh, from the uh, brook. And you take these cuttings from the tree and you make a sukkah, a hut or a booth. And you would sit in there, you would live in there, you would eat in there. And according to uh, rabbi tradition, uh, they would bind these together with uh, and make a lulav with an etrog. And they would uh, do a special recitation of words. And they shape this lulav, these four uh, branches together to the north, south, east, west, and shake it up toward the heavens and down below. And they have an etrog or an esrog, depending if you're Ashkenazic or Sephardic. And you would hold it in your hand a certain way. Now, that is not in the scripture. That is a tradition. And one of the things that we see is the um, Hebrew says hadar, the beautiful tree or the majestic tree. Take the the produce or the product of that tree. And then you use these things in your sukkah to, to construct this booth that you're going to live in. But there's nothing in scripture that tells us to bind those items together and take a citron or an etrog, esrog. One of the things that we understand is an etrog is not a native plant to Israel. It was not there during the time that the instructions were given. Uh, the etrog is from a completely different country. Now we do see in some of the writings that the etrogs were in Israel uh, during second temple time period because there is a, a record of how some of the rabbis got in a little tiff on the temple mount during the festival of Sukkot and they actually threw the etrogs at each other. But the etrog is not something that is natural and native to Israel. Uh, so the word hadar tree literally means the majestic or the beautiful tree. And that's what he was saying. Get the produce of the beautiful tree. Now, one of the things we know is during the festival of Sukkot, Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, this can be in the months of September or October. So you can see how if he would have specified one fruit, uh, it may have been ripe, say, September 18th, but by the time uh, the next year, say, rolled around, your festivals will move a little bit in, within the months, and something that might be ripe uh, September 18th would totally be rotten and falling off of the tree maybe by October 18th. So it doesn't specify. It just says the product or the produce of a Hadar tree, the beautiful tree, uh, the majestic tree. So there's some options there. Uh, behind me, you can see uh, Feast of Trumpets, Leviticus 23, 23 through 25, where it tells about that. And of course, Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, head of the month, head of the year, is when you can sight the new moon. And of course, you can kind of see that in the picture behind me. Thank you for joining me, and I'll have some more teachings about the fall festivals coming up, and I hope you have a blessed evening, and tell your friends uh, that they too uh, can join in and see some of these teachings at the Jewish Christian Study Center YouTube channel, and I also post them on our Facebook page. If you're in Arkansas, we'd love for you to join us this Friday night, uh, and for the different festivals that are coming up. Uh, we, we celebrate them all and we learn about them all uh, as we teach and we celebrate Adonai together. Shalom, shalom, and have a blessed day.